uh, Larry Elliott of The Guardian. Uh, climate change has been much in the news lately, and you've added to that a debate by warning companies about the risks of not changing their business models. I just wonder whether you think it's enough for climate change just to be dealt with by the bank's financial policy committee, or whether if climate change is as serious a threat as you say it is, it should also be a matter for the Monetary Policy Committee too to assess when it's coming to its judgments. To, I didn't catch the last bit, sorry, to uh, assess. Whether, it, whether the MPC should also be considering the impact of climate change when it's making its judgments about interest rates. Well, um, let's, let's take the first bit in terms of what the FPC has done, um, which, um, I mean, take note that um, Parliament declared a climate uh, emergency uh, yesterday, um, uh, as did the uh, Scottish uh, Authority, uh, uh, Scottish Assembly uh, a few weeks uh, previous. Um, and in many respects, that uh, reinforces uh, the approach um, that the FPC has taken. Um, the issues ultimately for uh, addressing climate change are uh, questions of government policy, pu broader public policy. Um, and the responsibility of uh, the bank and, and of private financial institutions um, is to be ready uh, for those, um, to have strategies that are resilient to uh, not just the physical risks of climate change, but at least over the course of the next several years, uh, for most financial institutions, the bigger issues will be changes in the policy framework. Um, uh, so to the extent to which climate change is, uh, or the policies to address uh, climate change are tightened, if I can use that terminology. Um, those institutions should be, um, and the institutions they fund should be disclosing um, their exposure to it, uh, their strategies to it, how they manage those risks, how they're going to seize the opportunities. Um, and particularly for financial institutions and the ones that we regulate, um, they should uh, know how to manage the risks, uh, those, those types of risks. And that's why the bank put out a uh, concluded a supervisory statement uh, for banks and insurers um, and released it uh, two weeks ago. It's why we will, uh, we're looking at scenario uh, analysis and stress testing uh, and a variety of other issues. Okay. So that's the bigger context. And I, I would say that events of the last several weeks reinforce the importance of that flexibility and that um, uh, being ready and being able to adjust and thinking about where policy is going as much as where the climate is going. I mean, obviously, the climate is important, but not everybody is exposed on the horizon they have. And this issue of horizon brings me to <coughs> monetary policy. So for us, um, I mean, we spend a lot of time, and most of the questions have been uh, understandably focused on what's going to happen in the next few quarters and the next few years. And uh, the climate issues are relevant from a monetary policy perspective to the extent they impact uh, the forecast, uh, their path of the economy and inflationary pressures over the course of the next few years. And, you know, I mean, this was a point I, I, I tried to make a few years ago and reinforce, which is, you know, the tragedy of the horizon is that if you rely on, mon it, when it becomes relevant for monetary policy, it will be, it will be too late. Um, that's not to detract at all from the steps that the bank, through the FPC and other uh, and through the PRA are, is taking to make sure the system is not just ready uh, to address these issues, but is actively managing these issues. And I'll finish with this. Actively managing means not just managing the risks, but actually funding and seizing the opportunities associated with the transition to a low carbon economy. And this is an area, you know, we spend a lot of time understandably um, talking about uh, shorter term issues around Brexit and adjustment, but this is an area where uh, the UK really does lead um, and the city does lead and can extend uh, that leadership and its impact uh, globally.